Jimmy, dude, thank you for being with me again. Of course, I, I just love being with you, man. That's my absolute and, pleasure. And your hair looks better than in the last episode. I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you so much. I had a little something done to it. He was working on that between <laughs> shoots. Uh, hey, check this out. I wanna, before we, we dive into this conversation, I want to open with this scripture. It's in Romans 8, 28, uh, and it's, it's gorgeous. Well, <laughs> it's gorgeous. Well done, Lord. All right. <laughs> we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. Now here's what blows my mind about that scripture. Everything, Paul didn't say some things. He didn't just say natural disasters work together for good. Uh, your broken arm works for your good. No, no, everything when you start to love God, including ways that you previously destroyed your own life. Even those things become part of, of, of your story which is ultimately his story, his history. Hey, I like that. Nice. I like that. All right, so, and we see that in your life, brother. All right, so you, you, you shared the story in that, in that last show about your, your, your redemption story, Mother Teresa coming and sitting by you and, and reminding you who you are and the pain of, of addiction and coming out of that. Mm. Man, we could talk for an hour just about yeah. that. Like, how, like the, the, the journey that's incredible, right? Um, but that, that's morphed in your life from, from your own struggle with, with the Lord mm -hmm. helping you through it. Uh, to, to ministry, to, to, to really save other people from the same junk that you were in. Uh, and I, I want to dive right into that with you, man. But uh, before we get into how you, you, you did it for the world, let's, let's hit real close to home. Mm -hmm. Because you walked through that journey with your own, with your own son, who struggled with, with addiction mm -hmm. too. Tell us about that story, about how, how it felt as a guy who struggled with that, find out your son struggling with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and, then, uh, and then tell us about Chinakulo and the whole journey there. So, so you know, it's, we, we just spent a whole bunch of time, right, in the previous episode talking about mm -hmm. the difficulties of my own life, right? Yeah. And we really just scratched the surface, right? Yeah. Um, but I lived a very, very difficult, sad and broken life before my redemption. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was the worst that anyone could ever live, right? And it was, and it was the most pain that I could ever experience. Mm. And uh, and then you know, many years later, uh, I find out that my own son is on drugs, right? And that's a whole new kind of pain, mm. right? Um, in in the my first thought is the is the same thought that every parent has in that moment is, what did I do wrong? Where did I go right. wrong? And my son grew up in my whole life was recovery, right? Mm. All my, I didn't serve alcohol in my home. I didn't, I, you know, I, I didn't hang with people that drank or did drugs. All the people that I spent time with were people in recovery. Right. Um, but, you know, it's a funny thing, man, and the devil is he's tricky, you know? Goes back to your identity. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's a tricky, it, the devil is tricky, you know? Um, when it comes to this thing, right, it's like, uh, you know, the way people with addiction are, are wired, if you will, mm -hmm. right, is we're the kind of people that we go over to the stove after being told a thousand times, don't touch the hot stove. Mm -hmm. And we touch the hot stove and we go, ooh, that hurt. And then we take our other hand and we stick it on the stove too, just to make sure. And that's, that's what he did. That's who mm. he was, right? And I didn't recognize no, it. No, and, and uh, parents, uh, any human being, we yeah. make it about us, Yeah. right? What did I do wrong? Yeah. And then there's the whole, like, how could you dare reject me? Yeah. And it's like, Dad, it's, got nothing, it's not about you. Yeah. This is well, his own kid's journey. To not, you know, it's, it's funny. And, and for people who are, you know, all parents obviously should be concerned about drugs, addiction, yeah, yeah. things of that nature, right? It's a, it's a very, very... We don't talk about it enough anymore, it's, man. It's, a, it's what's going on in the world today is very, very sad, oh, yeah. right? When it comes to addiction and, and the amount of people that we've lost to addiction. Oh, yeah. Um, but I want to tell you that I lived my whole life in recovery, in his whole life in recovery, more, more to be specific. I never drank or did any drugs his entire life. And, and was always educating him and always warning him that he couldn't afford to take the risks oh, yeah. that maybe other people it's were in, taking because he comes from a long line of people on both sides yeah. of his family that suffer from yeah. this thing. Yeah. And, but still he had to put his hand over that stove. Mm. And I missed all the signs, mm. right? Because I thought I did such a great job of educating my yeah. son. What, what do you, I mean, honestly, just tell a parent looking, looking at us right now, what do you tell a parent who just found this kind of thing out? Like, how not to not to take that personally, but also get motivated permission. Well, like, what do you say? 
Well, the, the first thing I would say is, is that it's not the end of the world. It can become the end of the world, right? But it's not the end of the world, right? And, and it's, it's a moment. Mm. It's a moment like no other. It's an opportunity to have a conversation, to have a real conversation. And, I, and I wanna, I'd love to tell you that I did it all right, right? I was perfect in every way. No, when I found out, I lost my mind. I couldn't mm. believe it. Mm. I could not believe it. And I was so angry and so upset. And I did everything wrong, right? Because we think we have all the answers, right? Yeah. And then it happens and we don't know what to do, right? And so... We had a long two year period, right? Where, I mean, soon as we found out, and we found out by approaching him with a cup and saying, I need you to pee in this cup. That we were gonna drug How'd that test go? him. As soon as we said those words to him, I watched him change into a different person before my eyes. Really? The lies started coming out of his mouth. Oh, right? see, that's what addiction does. Oh, man. it's like yeah, he's yeah. like, it's gonna, it's gonna be, there's gonna be something in there because I just tried it for the first yeah. time in my whole I've never did my, it before. But it's my friend's pee. But it's first my first time <laughs> yeah, ever. Yeah. And and I just watched these lies come out of my son's mouth and I and I just I couldn't believe it. And you know, for most families, for most parents, they worry about what could happen. I wasn't yeah. worried about what could happen. I was worried about what was going to happen because mm, I lived it, it. I experienced man. it. I just yeah. automatically heaped all that onto him, that that was going to be what happened to him if he went down this road. And, uh, and it was a long, hard road. I want to tell you, it was multiple schools asking him not to come back. Wow. It was, I mean, my son is such a gentle, loving Dude, man. I, lo I love that yeah. kid. He's such a kind person. And, and growing up, he was always that guy that was in the corner of the underdog yeah, and always yeah. looking out for the kids that maybe weren't as fast or weren't as yeah. quick or sharp or athletic or whatever whatever it was, he, he would always sort of take them under his wing. He was always a kind, beautiful person, you now, know? Now he's a music producer, yeah. which fits that too. He's yeah. finding talent, he's raising people up. Yeah. Uh, so that the real, uh, the real recovery for him happened at a yeah. mind-blowing place. Yeah, tell so... Us, tell us about the journey to Chinacolo and... So, so I got to tell you that yeah. another frustration for me was yeah, yeah. that I'm a person in recovery, a long-term recovery. So I think I have all the answers for him, right? But I don't, and I didn't, and it was he wasn't hearing a message from me, right? Which was very frustrating. And so we, I was I in hate a the car when you're a da dad yeah. and, and powerless. At the yeah, same time. I was completely powerless, and so we were in a car driving from Florida to Rhode Island to go to a rehab center, and my wife was watching EWTN. Mm. And Bishop Baker was on there from from St. Augustine. God bless you, David. And uh, and it was the very first time that young people from Communita Chinaclo, which is a Catholic community for addicts, which was started in Italy, all oh, 30 years ago, yep. um, by a little nun. Uh, there was the first time that the the young people from America were on TV and they were giving their testimonies. And my wife is watching <laughs> this. And my wife, you know my wife. Yeah. My wife is a holy woman. Yeah. My wife is a, an amazing woman yeah. of God. And she was watching this and she knew instantly that God was speaking to her. Praise God. Through Bishop Baker. She knew that's where her son needed to go. Her son wow. needed God. He didn't need any other yeah. thing. He needed God. That's what was missing from his life. And so she called me on the phone and she's like, yeah, I got the place. And I was like, okay, honey, we're, you know, we're on our way to the, and to I the other just, place that and I, I and honestly, you know, the, the sad thing about addiction and, and what it does to a family is, is I was driving to Rhode Island and I couldn't wait to get there. I couldn't wait to be away from my own child. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, because yeah. the relationship was so fractured so and, and the devil had such a hold on us both. Right. Yeah. When it came to the way we interacted with each other yeah. that I couldn't wait to be away from him. And it was still a journey of another year or more before we finally got to that place where we went to visit Chinacolo. So in Chinacolo, they're, they're basically living a, a monastic life. Right. 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 I mean, they're getting up at 5 a.m. Yep. It's yeah. work. So let me it's just prayer. say this it's before. Be, so Chinacolo, the name Chinacolo translates into Seneca, right? Which is the upper room, right? This is this is what's happening, right? Well, you want healing? Yeah. Sit in the upper yeah. room. So this is this is this is this is a community that is grounded in prayer and work and brotherhood, right? Yeah. That's in the gospel. Right? That's, That's what they're grounded in, three rosaries a day, and in lifting each other up in healing, mm. right? 
healing and, and God's love and God's mercy, mm. right? Healing first before you can grow and before you got to heal. Mm. And so, and so this nun, Mother Alvira from yeah. Italy, uh, this tricky little woman, right? <laughs> who creates this community, builds this community. I love nuns who get stuff done, man. So <laughs> under the pretense, bring us your addicts. We'll take care of them. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah. But, but that's only half of it. She's after us all. She's after the entire family. She's trying to bring mm. the whole family into to the, the foot of the cross, mm. to the foot of the cross. Praise the Lord. And that's what happened to our family. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I had a conversion in state prison and then I just coasted and mm. didn't live a, a didn't live a life of faith. Right. I just coasted. I didn't. I was my life was better, particularly outwardly. I looked better. I I had a home. I wasn't living in the streets. I wasn't using you, drugs. And you were going to mass, right? I was going to mass. But that your, but your priorities were but not I gospel was being, priorities. But no, I was being dragged to mass. I yeah. was being dragged to mass. I was having all kinds of issues with the church and with the scandals. And I just, the devil oh, had I me. I got issues with the, those scandals. The, 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 the devil yeah. had me just enough. Just, yeah. here's a little wedge. And I, and I was given permission to believe in a God of my own understanding, which is just mm. the scariest thought to me mm. now, right? Um, but my son ends up in this community and I end up at the foot of the cross and I end up mm. having Jesus present himself to me again in such a way that was just so profound and just my heart absolutely melted and and it was a journey for my family not just for me and for the first time in my life mm. my wife and I are praying together Praise right so we God. invite we invite Jesus into our mm. into our marriage right we invite the blessed mother into our marriage mm. and it changed everything for us and oh dude yeah. your, your your fight with your son brought you to your fight with the lord amen that's it man i i, I just i was as you're talking i just remember a fight i had with my teenage son once yeah. And he, he just got out of control and I cut him off. I'm like, I forgive you. And he kept yeah. talking. I'm like, I forgive you. I'm like, I, hey, I forgive you. Yeah. And, then, and then he just started crying mm -hmm. and he said, I'm sorry, Dad. But it was like, let me cut through all the noise. Yeah, but I got this issue with the church and this issue with the scandal, this issue with, the issue with that priest or that bishop. And the Lord threw it all. I was like, no, no, no. Come to the foot of the cross. I, I got, I got, it's about mm -hmm. you and me. Mm -hmm. It's about you and me. I forgive you. Yeah. Before, before you say you're sorry, I'm ready. I'm here. Are you ready? I, you know, I just love how the Lord brought you to that moment through, through this today, struggle, Today, you and I mm. sat in your office and we talked. And just because we haven't yeah. seen each other in a little while, we're just getting caught up. And, you know, it's, it's funny how, how God works, right? Yeah. That we're sitting here having this conversation. And, and I'm hovering around that place again, right? Where I'm just focused on the negative, right? Yeah. There's oh, so yeah. much it's negative in the world, right? Oh, yeah. That I, I find myself focused on the negative again, right? And when I focus on the, on the negative... I don't see the beauty of Christ. I don't yeah. see the beauty of the Blessed Mother. I don't see the beauty in the world. Mm. I don't see the good that came out of what was supposed to be the worst thing to ever happen to us, right? Mm. There was so much good that came out of that from me and from my family. <laughs> yeah. and, and now I forgot all about it. Now I'm just focused on the negative again. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. And this horrible and, thing in the news, that and horrible I thing can't, in the news. Yeah. And, and you know what? Yeah. I wasn't brought to this place to, to, to turn my back on Christ, right? And yeah. to turn my back on the beauty yeah. that is our faith. Amen. Right? We got we to gotta fight the garbage with, with our eye. And this is hard to do because you're looking at the garbage you're fighting, but you're thinking about the love of the Lord mm -hmm. and redemption. Yep. And we, uh, this is the story. This is why it's so he healthy for people who are in anonymous groups yeah. to go keep sharing the story. Yeah. This is the story that, yeah. that, that should animate what we do. I think of the early Christians fighting the culture wars. Yep. But they were fighting it constantly with the Lord Jesus loves you. He's yeah. calling you to convert. Look what he did for me. Yeah. I mean, that, that's what it came down to. And that's what it's got to keep coming back to mm. for us. So with that in mind, let's look at the culture war for a minute here. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the pandemics really happening right now that people aren't talking about, is, especially in the past year, year and a half, is, is drugs, man. Yeah. Like yeah. When, we were, when we were growing up, there was a Just Say No campaign. Yeah. Everybody's talking about yeah. this stuff. Kids in school today, they're barely talking about this. In yeah. churches, they're barely talking about this. Well, so, the church has done a terrible job. It's, it, everybody's doing a terrible a job. Terrible one, job in terms of addiction. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I could go, you could go to every bishop in the United States and yeah. ask, them, um, ask them about Communitat Chinaclo, right? And mm -hmm. they won't know what it is. I know, man. Right? I know. So you're raising awareness about yeah. all this. Yeah. Uh, I, and you, you made an incredible movie, What About the Kids? 
people should find on whataboutthekidsfilm.com. Yep. And I want to ask you about that and about how you're, how you're raising awareness with film. But I, I want to, we want to play a little clip from this movie. Okay. Uh, we, we've ripped, uh, I hope this is okay, with, with OSV, who produced the movie. With <laughs> we, we ripped 60 seconds. Please don't sue the Augustan Institute. Uh, let's, let's roll this because it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Mommy, come look at Daddy. He looks silly. <laughs> He's looking like a squirrel. Nicole, you got to get in some of these eggs. That Chloe made before I eat them all. Mmm. Mmm. Now, I would have been a little bit upset at you for using the stove without mom or me in the kitchen. But these eggs are so good that I'm just gonna let it go. Call. Hey. Nicole. 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 Oh god. Oh god. Chloe, call, call 911. Baby, 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 baby. No, 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 no. No, baby, baby, please. Please, please, no. No, 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 no. No, no. Nicole! Nicole, wake up! Nicole, please, 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 please wake up, please wake up! Catch my breath, dude. <clears throat> yeah, so you know this is this is happening all over the place. Everywhere. Almost nobody talks about it. I mean, you, you go to schools now and everybody's obsessing on making sure that people can urinate in the bathroom they want to urinate yeah. in. And then people are called by the proper pronouns. And and we're and we're and we're catering to 0.01% uh, of the population with, n like, how, m how much effort goes to that kind of thing? And I'm not saying these are unimportant issues, yeah. but the addiction growing and exploding right now, and it's mm. like people in the church, people in school boards, it's like, w where's the conversations about this? And that story is lived out again and again and again in little kids' lives. And I, the, the, by the way, the whole, the whole thing continues with that kind of <clears throat> beauty and intensity and... Uh, Thanks for bringing attention to it in a, in a way that just like I, I've seen it before. Yeah. And it just nails yeah. me in the gut. Uh, tell us about the whole movie and your, your hope in making it and, yeah. uh, and how people can share it. So here's the thing about, about all that's going on in the world, right? Mm -hmm. So we have all, we're living through some very difficult and dark times in yeah. our world, right? And when it comes to addiction, there are far too many of us still in this country that blame the person, the addict, right? This yeah. is their decision, it's their fault, right? right? It's not our fault, we have other things to worry about, right? People are dying because they can't breathe from a pandemic and, and people are out of work and in inflation and gas prices and all these other things that they have to worry about, mm. right? And so we were pre-pandemic, the numbers for overdose deaths and non-fatal overdoses were starting to show a downward trend. There was, it was being worked on from mm. many different perspectives. And then the pandemic is mm. really the perfect storm for an addict, right? Because mm. addiction You're alone. is isolation, separation, right, it's loneliness, right. it's depression. And recovery yeah. is community, it's love, it's faith, it's God, right? Yeah. And when you separate people from that human connection, it's a perfect storm for oh drug gosh. addicts. And so we've yeah. seen the numbers ex explode. Yeah. And to a point where, you know, we're, we're big on numbers here in this country, right? And these numbers are h way higher than they've ever been and they're askew, they're wrong. They're not nearly high enough for what's really happening. And I'm gonna tell you that this particular film addresses another sort of thing that's happening in this country is that is the number of grandparents that are mm. raising their grandchildren because yeah. their children, the grandchildren's parents have died from overdoses, right? Mm. Um, it's a the, huge societal shift, man. It's unbelievable yeah. what we've been facing in this country. Mm. And I wanna just say that just at the very end of that clip, 
yeah. a woman came on. Her name is Patty Darbinville. And Patty's she's been in actress, Hollywood yeah, for years incredible. and years and years and had a huge conversion. Yeah. And when I called her to tell her about this script and to ask her if she would be in this film, um, she started to cry. She said, you don't understand. I've been praying and praying and praying wow. for a story, a, a story of redemption and, and, and of God's love, right? And of something that I can be proud of, yeah. right? And, and this is it. And, and, and then she was on that set was such a reflection of God's oh, love and trying yeah. and, and really like, she was the grandma. Man. She was, and she was evangelizing and, and trying to bring people to, yeah. to God that entire time she was working on that film, yeah. all these young, you know, movie film yeah. type people. Right. And she was a, a beautiful, amazing woman. So it's, 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 uh, and talking about using media the right way. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and there's, and, but these kind of things that are kind of more in the grassroots level. Yeah. You don't have mega studios putting ten million dollars yeah, in promotion no. here. Uh, you had OSV. You had your raw talent yeah. with this stuff and some, and a great crew, which would be yeah. a skeleton crew next to big productions, yeah. right? Yeah. But it, but it, the talk about David versus Goliath. The end product was just as good as big productions. Mm. But we need uh, grassroots to support things like that. So if people want to be part of getting the word out with a with a beautiful film. What about the kids film.com? Uh, what do they do? What's your hope for churches, youth groups? So if you groups? so if you go to what about the kids film.com, yep. you can get a copy of the film. You can get workbooks and material yeah. to educate people. Um, you know, OSV, I have to say, had, did a fantastic job. Yeah. And we did the, we shot this film just before the pandemic, right? And Praise it God, was man. finished. And we were in the pandemic, right? Okay, talk about providential timing. Right, so we, but yeah. we, the plan was to be out in the world, doing screenings, doing events, yeah, doing yeah. educating people, and we're just starting to do that now. But, um, but they did such a great job of creating the materials to go along with the film. There's also a documentary that goes along with the film, and we, we look at a real family that had a very similar experience and it, and it mirrors the wow. film, wow. right? And you get to meet a real family who really had to bury their loved one mm. and the grandparents had to take their three grandchildren and raise them. Wow. You know, one of the things I love about the film is it, it again, it humanizes people who we write off as, oh, those yeah. people. And one of the worst things about doing that is that if you happen to be one of those people, it's shame that locks you away from the help mm -hmm. and community you need. Hmm. You know, it, you have to humanize yourself. I mean, like, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you've done, I mean, this is the message of the gospel. Yep. You're not reducible, like what Mother Teresa said to you yeah. when you are in prison. You're not reducible to the worst thing you did. Addict is not your name. Yep. It's not what you are. I mean, I think of St. Peter's first encounter with the Lord. Depart from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. He's like, mm -hmm. I got a name for myself. You're looking at me trying to call me. I'm not that guy. Yep. I'm a sinful man. Jesus saw who he was, though. And this is the beauty of the gospel. That no, 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 nothing else can do what, what the Lord does. Mm. I see you. I see you. You're, you're more. But uh, this, this gets the conversations going. This makes it human. This makes people unafraid to talk about it. Puts the fire in our butts as a church to deal with mm -hmm. it. Because uh, it's exploding right now. And you're working on something else right now, too. We've got about seven minutes left. But I want to hear a little more about the, the film you're working on right now. So we're working on a film right now. We're actually working two films simultaneously, a documentary and a film. Only two? Yeah, okay. that's all I can handle at <laughs> one time. But the film that we're working on takes a very close-up look at Purdue Farmer, who are the mm. people, the Sackler family, are the family that... And hopefully the Augusta Institute will not be sued yeah. following That's, the release of This is of all show. public record now, but yeah, no, it is. right? Yeah. But they are uh, the family that invented Oxycontin, which is what created this mm. whole uh, opioid epidemic in our country, right? And they no, so many, so many regular people becoming addicts. Yeah. It's like, oh. how did that happen? Well, and, and, that, and see, here's the thing is that you'd be hard pressed to find a family now that doesn't have somebody who suffered from addiction or what a, lo a lot of people like to call it substance use disorder now, yeah. right? Yeah. You'd be hard pressed to find a family. You'd be hard pressed, I mean, even law enforcement, right? Law oh, yeah. enforcement has taken a whole new look at 
this epidemic and addiction in general, where they used to say, you're breaking the law just by using those drugs and possessing those drugs. Yeah. We're going to lock you up, right? And now they're looking at people, and for the first time, this a slight shift in the way we look at addiction. These are innocent yeah. people. Oh, These yeah. aren't people that made a decision to become drug addicts. These are people they, yeah, that they went to the doctor. They went to a trusted member of our community with a white jacket and a stethoscope yeah. who has years of education, and he prescribed those medications to them and, and was sold the bill of goods by, by Purdue Pharma. They were told oh, less than 1% becomes addicted to this drug, when the truth of the matter is is that almost everybody that took it became addicted. Good Lord. Have mercy. Uh, how are people going to hear about that when it comes out? So make sure we. Don't I'm going to come back stuff. and I'm going to tell you about it. We're going to. We're, we're going to talk know. about it, brother. I'm so gra grateful you're fighting the fight. And you know what else I love, uh, Jimmy? You don't just fight this by making a film and stepping away. All right. I have the blessing of knowing you personally. I connected you with friends who are struggling with addiction. Hmm. And uh, and boom, you'll answer their call. And I and I hung when I was hanging at your house. I was very moved by this. It's like 8.30 at night, and we're all hanging out. We're having family time. My kids are there. Your kids are there. And uh, you get a call, and you disappear for a half hour. Uh, why? Because you do for people who are addicted what the Lord did for you. This person comes first immediately. You know, and, uh, and that's, part of, that's part of your healing and staying healthy. Well, they say, they say that you can't keep it unless you give it away, mm. right? And when you get the opportunity to, to explain to somebody just how big... God's mercy is and mm -hmm. that nothing is too big for God, right? Amen. That whatever your circumstance, you can be redeemed from that and you can mm -hmm. be healed from that and you can walk a new life. Um, it, it's hard to, it's hard to, to keep that keep inside. <laughs> you, you can't, and I can't, if I'm not giving this away, if I'm not sharing yeah. the good news of what's possible through Jesus Christ, then I'm going to go back into the darkness. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's, and that's the Christian life. Amen. Whether it's addiction you're coming out of or any sin you struggle Amen. with, yep. this, is, this is not hopeless when you see yourself in that. It's like this is the Lord's path for me to be redeemed and to pull other people mm -hmm. with me. I love, uh, it was, I think it's 2 Corinthians. We comfort people in our, the Lord comforts us in our affliction so we can comfort others with the same comfort we got from Him. Amen. He did that with, with an end in mind, not just to make us tools, but yep. to share with us the joy of doing what He does. Amen. And we, we get that. That's so cool. What would you say, somebody? You know, we, we got just a couple minutes before we got to wrap. Uh, talk straight to camera. Someone is watching right now and thinking, oh, man, yeah, I can't stop the thing I'm doing. Mm. I wake up in the morning and I think of my vodka. Uh, what do you say to that, to that guy? When I first came to start to try to journey on this road to recovery, I remember feeling like, this is a beautiful thing. Recovery is a beautiful thing for other people, but it's, it's not for me because I'm not worthy of it, right? That's how I felt inside. Mm. I'm not worthy of this. I want to tell you that you are worthy of this and that you are a child of God and that Jesus Christ died for your sins, just like Mother Teresa told me, right? You are worthy of all that is beautiful in Christ. And so pick up the phone, ask somebody for help, reach out. Right? Talk to a priest. Talk Amen. to anybody. Amen. But somebody. Get it out of you. Amen. I love you, man. I love you too, brother. Dude, praise God for you. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you so much that you love us so much that you died for us, that you look at us, and I don't get it. I, I will never get it. Hmm. But you see somebody worth dying for, even in our worst moment. Actually, especially in our worst hmm. moment. I don't understand, but I'm so grateful. Thanks for loving us, Lord. Help us to see that in ourselves and to respond. Help us to see that in others and the lost sheep and to go to them as you did and as you, as you come to us. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. In the name Amen. of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.